there were a lot of very smart, talented, capable, and very committed people that were involved. And I think that if there was a very simple problem that, or decision they could have made, or a simple problem they could fix, or some behavior they could change that would have allowed the game, or helped the game ship, that they all would have jumped at that, and they would have done that. So I, I can imagine then that there were a lot of complex, cascading things that contributed to why now Duke Nukem Forever is legendary as the longest development cycle in the history of all video games. I got into level design uh, with Duke 3D when I was in sixth grade. So I'm a Duke fan. I know, I remember looking at a magazine, looking at screenshots of Duke Nukem Forever and thinking, wow, I have to pre-order this game because it's amazing, you know, and uh, all these years. And I mean, I've been on that ride as same as anybody else. For me, from my perspective, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I actually enjoy working on the game and doing this stuff. So it wasn't so painful for it being a 10-year project um, because I was always doing new things, always getting new tech and things like that, so I enjoyed it. Everybody that was working on the project were all huge fans of Duke, mm -hmm. and so we're all really passionate about what we're doing. So, you know, we we're all going the extra mile just because we were doing what we loved. It was kind of this it's more of a circle where by the time we got some of these levels far enough along that we really liked and we'd come back to the other ones that we'd worked on earlier and enough had changed on the gameplay side of things or another game had come out and so the standards had changed and so that original level that was really good a year, year and a half ago didn't really stand up as much anymore and we wanted to go back and revisit it and you know I don't want to put all the the burden on one person so I'm not going to do that. We were all there and we all you know, voiced our opinions and desires, but uh, but uh, you know, it was a it was a it was a continuous cycle of iteration that didn't have any real end in in sight. We didn't we didn't uh, have any plan put in front of us in terms of okay, we're going to iterate to reach this goal. It was just we're going to iterate, and then it'll eventually be awesome. It was getting harder and harder for people to believe that it was actually real, um, but every time that people really started to doubt. Um, a trailer would come out showing off all these great new things. Uh, 1997, that trailer came out at E3 and it was great. Um, and people were like, man, this is gonna be spectacular. <laughs> There was no such thing as a, as a milestone delivery, you know, the, it was just make it cool, make it awesome. And the, the funny thing about making cool and awesome things is you can always make it more cool and more awesome. And uh, you'll find that the time just tends to fly by when you're doing that. That was the E3, you know, God Games, they had, um, because the E3 space, I guess, was so expensive or whatever, they decided to put their um, booth in a parking lot across the street from the, uh, the uh, Los Angeles Los Convention Angeles. Center, yeah. And so it was a huge, it turned, it just kind of turned this large, like, party. yeah, party. I was just as apprehensive about it in 2005 as anybody would be today. Yeah. About the, the, the project then was as, as controversial and as yeah. long in the tooth as any. And uh, I came to Texas with the idea of like, well, I'll give it a month and I'll see what happens. You know, yeah. I didn't even get an apartment. I stayed in the hotel they rented, me, rented for me as long as possible. But within a day, I was in the offices. I had met everybody. I really liked everybody. And I got to sit down and see the game. And I was really impressed. And that's what made me realize it was like, well, all this secondhand, you know, public uh, postulating about how it is, it, 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 it's not accurate at all. Yeah, uh, it, was it, a, it doesn't really relate yeah. to the same game. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like there's two separate games. There's the people, people that were expecting the yeah. game to be and the, what they think is going on, and then yeah. you get there and you see, oh, this is an actual legitimate yep. game, it's fun to play, and all these things, and they were like two separate things. I realized that Duke Nukem was a big hit and, 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 a, and a pop culture icon when I started getting these calls from uh, convention uh, coordinators who wanted me to come be a guest. I went, Why would you want me to be a guest at your convention? Well, you're the voice of Duke Nukem. 
Oh, really? That's why you want me? We have fans who want to meet you and get your autograph. Probably 2007, uh, 3D Realms de decides to release a teaser. And because of the relationship that you know, we had with 3D Realms at the time, they actually decided to premiere it at our website. This is a website I had, you know, been running for a long time, and we had scaled up quite a bit, and we had not had problems with traffic in years, and we'd been featured on CNN and all these kind of major things, and we've always handled no problem. We put out a trailer, though, for that game, even though it's honestly just brief half-second glimpses of just a few things, and the whole thing came down. It looked great, and it didn't come out. <laughs> So we kept going through these cycles of like all the way from 97 from that first trailer to 2000, 2001 trailer to waiting a long time, 2007 teaser. And every time gamers were blown away with what great stuff they were and like, why will this not come out? I've always thought the game would eventually come out because there was just too much there. And um, I'm glad that the Triptych guys here were able to pull it off. I went and interviewed at 3D Realms uh, kind of on a whim, uh, wondering what the game was about, and uh, it was awesome, like even back then. Like when I saw it for the first time, uh, there were things in the game that nobody else was doing. And so uh, I had a talk with George, and uh, he convinced me to come over as a designer, and uh, then I, I moved to Dallas with Kristen, and uh, we worked on the game for four and a half years uh, until the dreaded day, which was in May of 2009, when uh, 3D Realms shut its doors on the project. I was talking to, I'm sure other people had offered this as well, but I was talking to our programmer, uh, Rob, and uh, was saying, you know, if, if you want to work on it in this, our spare time, I'll, I'm willing to do that with you if you want to do it. Let's just, I, it's just a tragedy that this game will never come out, you know. And uh, then, yeah, around that time, uh, David Regal was uh, going around talking to people, and so we were already interested anyway, so it kind of all fell into place. We had like three or four meetings with all the people who were really serious about forming the company. And the last one was in June of 2009. And just by coincidence, uh, when we brought everybody to the house, that was the same night uh, that we did have tornado warnings. So uh, we were essentially forced to sit around uh, in our living room for about two hours and talk about the company and the game. And I think, you know, maybe if people hadn't been forced to sit in on, uh, and, and wait, that maybe we wouldn't have talked about as much or convinced them. There were a few meetings off site, but pretty much our house became the center of everything. It was actually the most exciting time in my career, um, which is odd. I mean, usually you don't think um, you think that. I mean, yeah, I wasn't getting paid. I was working a ton of hours, and uh, but it was all because we all we were working towards the same thing. We all were on we were all on the same page. We wanted to finish Duke. I did a lot of work on the weekends and stuff. You know, I, I like doing various things. You know, I. I concepted up a, a lot of the stuff that's in the game now, like Monster Truck I did on, on the weekends, uh, Pool Tables I did on the weekends, Air Hockey I did on the weekends, um, and yeah, I just enjoy it. So for me, from my perspective, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I actually enjoy working on the game and doing this stuff. You hear a lot of stories about game companies starting in somebody's living room, you know, with a project that nobody had heard of, and it, you know, it really takes, um, once it's announced, it goes, you know, viral or whatever you whatever you want to say and that's pretty much how it was I mean we were working crazy hours you know uh, getting on each other's nerves starting to stink up the house and all that junk but you know we were all really focused because we were going to be the ones that brought Duke back Hail to the King baby